Good morning, fellas, and welcome back to Me Plays Games. My name is Matt, and with each new generation of Pokémon, the mechanics of the game were tweaked slightly. In Gen 6, the chance of getting a critical hit is 1 in 16, but for Gen 7 it was lowered to 1 in 24. When the ability Moody was introduced, it could affect any stat, but as of Gen 8, it can change your accuracy or evasion, thank God! So today, I'm throwing my own hat into the ring. If I were in charge of Generation 10 of Pokémon, here's some of the mechanics I'd want to tweak. Dual-type Pokémon have a primary type and a secondary type. Walrein is an ice-water type, and Lapras is a... water-ice type. There's pretty much no difference between these two type combinations in practice, though. They both have the same weaknesses and resistances, they both get power boosts on the same moves, blah 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 blah. If you swap the types around, they'd effectively be the same Pokémon they were before. Outside of Legends Arceus, there are almost no mechanics that work differently based on your primary and secondary types. A Psychic Fairy type is functionally identical to a Fairy Psychic type. The only thing that takes the order of your types into consideration is the move Revelation Dance, or a Choreo Signature move. The move's type always matches the user's primary type. So for Pom Pom style or Choreo, it'll be Electric type, Sensu style it'll be Ghost type, and so on and so on. And if a Pokémon calls it using some other move like Metronome or Mirror move, Revelation Dance would be based on their primary type as well. Other than that, the order of types has no effect on the game whatsoever, so I had a couple of ideas to change that. Let's start with the same type attack bonus, or stab for short. If a Pokémon uses a move that matches one of its types, that move becomes 50% stronger due to stab. But what if the primary type had a bigger stab boost than the secondary type? Let's make the primary type stab a 60% boost, and the secondary stab 40%. Going back to the Water Ice types from before, that means Walrein's Ice Beam would be stronger than its Surf, but it would be the other way around for Lapras. My other idea has to do with the defensive side of things. What if the primary type's weaknesses and resistances had a bigger effect on damage taken than the secondary types? So for example, Drift Blim is a Ghost Flying type. The primary Ghost type makes it weak to Dark and Ghost, and the secondary Flying typing adds weaknesses to Electric, Ice, and Rock. So I thought it makes sense if Electric, Ice, and Rock moves still do more damage, but not as much as the Ghost and Dark moves would. Maybe make it 2 times weak to Dark and Ghost, and 1.7 times weak to the rest. Something like that. I'm not 100% sure what multipliers would work best, but these changes would make it so the primary and secondary types actually mean something. There's also been an imbalance between physical and special attackers for the longest time, and there's a couple reasons for that. For one, most types have better special moves than physical ones. Let's take the fire type as an example. The best special fire type moves are the 90 power, 100 accuracy flamethrower, and the stronger but less accurate fire blast. The physical moves aren't as good though. Your best options are Fire Punch, which is weak, or Flare Blitz, which does a lot of recoil damage. And the same goes for a lot of other types. Sludge Bomb and Sludge Wave are stronger than Poison Jab, Thunderbolt is stronger than Thunder Punch, Moon Blast is stronger and more accurate than Play Rough, the list goes on. Special moves are usually better than their physical counterparts. In fact, that's part of why Nidoking mostly uses special moves competitively, even though its physical attack stat is higher. The special moves do more damage, because Nidoking's special attack isn't much lower than its physical attack, and the special moves have a higher base power. Plus, the special ground-type move Earth Power is boosted by its ability Shear Force, but not the physical move Earthquake. And special attackers don't just have an advantage in the move department. Whenever a Pokémon hits itself in confusion, the damage is calculated using its own attack and defense stats. That means the higher your attack, the more confusion damage you'll take. Since special attackers can afford to have lower attack stats, they take less damage from confusion. Pokémon with high attack stats also get smacked by Foul Play, a Dark-type move that calculates damage using the target's attack stat instead of the user's. Similarly, Intimidate is a common ability that a lot of Pokémon have access to. Upon switching in, Intimidate lowers the opponent's attack by one stage. That's a pretty big blow if that opponent has a physical attacker on the field, and this ability doesn't have a special equivalent. So special attackers get off scot-free once again. They can fire off Psychics and Shadow Balls and Earth Powers and whatever, and they don't have to worry about abilities lowering their stats. There's also a bunch of abilities and items that punish you for using moves that make contact, the vast majority of which are physical. If you make contact with a Pokémon that has the ability Rough Skin or Iron Barbs, you'll lose one-eighth of your max HP. Same thing goes for the item Rocky Helmet, but the punishment is even more severe. If you hold one and your opponent hits you with a contact move, they'll take one-sixth of their max health. Rocky Helmet and the aforementioned abilities completely shut down Mousehold Signature Move Population Bomb. It hits up to 10 times, but it puts Mousehold at risk of one-shotting itself if it runs into Rocky Helmet, Rough Skin, or Iron Barbs, since it'll take damage on every single hit. So it's completely shut down by a Pokémon like Rocky Helmet Corviknight. Similarly, Static and Flame Body are also abilities that can punish physical attackers. If you make contact with a Pokémon that has Static, you have a 30% chance of getting paralyzed, and Flame Body has a 30% chance of burning you. Uh, quick addendum, this isn't in my scripts, but Poison Point does the same thing. There's no special equivalent for any of this stuff, which makes it harder to navigate a battle as a physical attacker. And to make things even worse, Burn Pokémon take residual damage each turn, 
and their physical attacks deal half as much damage. There's also no special equivalent for burns. Sort of. We'll get back to that in a second. So that's the next thing I try to fix if I were in charge of the Pokemon games. Bring special attackers down a peg by introducing new moves, items, and abilities. Stronger physical moves, a special version of foul play, abilities and items to punish the use of special moves, that sort of thing. And the last thing I want to do is tweak the status conditions. Getting frozen sucks, but Frostbite was introduced in Legends Arceus. Instead of completely immobilizing you with no guarantee of ever defrosting, Frostbite acts as a special equivalent of Burn. A Frostbitten Pokémon does half damage with their special attacks. Frostbite is currently exclusive to Legends Arceus, but I think it should be in the standard games moving forward as well. Any move that has a freeze chance currently would have a Frostbite chance instead, and that kills two birds with one stone, because freeze is an absolutely horrible status condition, so I'm perfectly cool with deleting it entirely. But to help Frostbite become more widespread, let's also add a status move that can cause it. Introducing Flash Freeze, an Ice-type equivalent of Will-O-Wisp. It would have the same 85% accuracy and it would cause Frostbite. That would help bring special attackers down a little bit, but maybe not by much because ice types are horrible. So for the sake of game balance, I'd also give it to a handful of water types. I'm thinking of making another video where I make up more Pokemon moves, so leave a comment if you'd like to see that video, and subscribe if you're enjoying yourself so far. Next, let's talk about how I would change the stat system. Anything that messes with accuracy and evasion is an absolute nightmare to deal with. A lot of moves are 100% accurate, but there's also quite a few that can miss. And on top of that, moves like Sand Attack and Double Team make them miss way more often than they should. The first time your accuracy is lowered or your opponent's evasion is boosted, a 100% accurate move will hit 75% of the time. Out of the hundreds of moves in the game, you know how many have less than 75% accuracy? 17. So one sand attack makes your move less accurate than nearly every unmodified move in the game. And it gets worse. If your opponent maxes out their double teams, for example, and they've boosted their evasion by six stages, your moves will only hit 33% of the time. At this point, only the one-hit KO moves are less accurate. And even then, if you have a big enough level advantage, Oko moves max out at 100% accuracy too. So this really is the bottom of the barrel. 33 accuracy is horrible and beyond infuriating. There is one silver lining, and that's the fact that you can stack more than six stages of accuracy and evasion. If your sand attacks six times, and your moves are 33% accurate, your opponent can't then use double team as well to make themselves even harder to hit. If you could stack 6 sand attacks and 6 double teams, that would make moves hit just 11% as often as they're supposed to. So I mean, that saves Dynamic Punch from becoming literally 5.5% accurate. Big whoop. That's the only bone the game throws you though. Accuracy and evasion are awful mechanics, and one of the reasons is because the moves and abilities that mess with them are way too strong, so I would tone them down a ton. Each time your accuracy is lowered, your moves would lose 5 percentage points of accuracy. So for example, Fire Punch would go from 100 accuracy to 95, putting it on par with Air Slash. That'd still be annoying, but you're way less likely to miss multiple moves in a row while your opponent pummels you. An 80% accurate move like Hydro Pump would become 75%, and so on and so on. Under this system, moves would never lose more than 30 percentage points in accuracy. You could absolutely argue that they should be removed entirely, but for now let's just tone them down a bit. Some abilities like No Guard and Compound Eyes boost accuracy, but I would leave those as they are. I think they're fine, because getting hit by inaccurate moves is way less annoying than missing accurate ones. Next, let's focus on some other abilities. Most of them have some effect in battle, but not all of them do. Ball Fetch, Honey Gather, Illuminate, and Runaway do nothing in trainer battles whatsoever. If a Yamper with Ball Fetch is on the field when you fail to catch a Pokémon, it'll retrieve the Pokéball you threw and put it back in your bag. This only works once per battle though, so it's not a foolproof way to never waste Pokéballs. Meanwhile, Runaway makes it so that you'll always be able to escape from wild battles, regardless of speed or whether they've trapped you. But two abilities do absolutely nothing during combat whatsoever, wild battles or otherwise. Illuminate only has an effect in the overworld, and it is not good. All it does is double the chances of encountering wild Pokémon, because I think that's something we've all been clamoring for. I've always wanted to go into a cave and run to a Zubat every two steps instead of every four steps. And Honey Gather is just a way more situational version of Pickup. At the end of each battle, a Honey Gather Pokémon has a chance of picking up an item. Except the only possible item they'll find is Honey. With Pickup, you can find a wide variety of items, like TMs, Rare Candies, Revives, Pokéballs, the list goes on. So let's make up some uses for these abilities in Trainer Battles. I think Runaway is the easiest ability to buff. Let's make it so that any Pokémon with this ability can always switch out, even if it's trapped by Mean Luck, Shadow Tag, any of that stuff. Switching is a key aspect of Pokémon battles, especially competitively, so there are a lot of situations where trapping can be beneficial. Certain Pokémon are immune to being trapped, like Ghost Types, and two Shadow Tag Pokémon can't trap each other. But if I were running this ship, Runaway would also work on stuff like Mean Luck and Magma Storm. Heck, maybe it could also let you switch before Thrasher Outrage ended, avoiding the guaranteed confusion once the move is finished. 
For Ball Fetch, let's buff it so that a Pokemon with this ability can't lose ball-shaped items. If your opponent tries to take it from you with, say, Knock Off or Trick, you'll keep your item. This would work on stuff like the Iron Ball, Life Orb, and Snow Ball. Not a great ability, but at least it does something now. My idea for Illuminate is pretty straightforward. Just make it boost your accuracy. I think that makes sense because if you illuminate the battlefield, it'll make it easier for you to see. Maybe you could boost your teammates' accuracy as well in double battles. And finally, let's make Honey Gather have a chance of slowing opponents down, each time you hit them with a move. Yeah, didn't have any great ideas for this one. In this day and age, battle simulators like Pokemon Showdown are really popular. So much so that some people exclusively play Pokemon on simulators, and they don't play the first party games at all. That means they have absolutely no reason to ever use an ability like Ball Fetch or Illuminate. And even without taking simulators into consideration, there are also people who will bulldoze their way through the games, so they can start playing competitive VGC or what have you as quickly as possible. My point is, a lot of people aren't concerned with the main story in one way or another, and those folks have no reason to ever use these abilities. So I thought it'd be nice to give them some kind of use in battle. Well, that's all I got for now. Leave a comment and let me know what you would change if you were in charge of Pokemon. I'll see you all next time. Good night, fellas. Sleep well.